Aloha. <laughs> Got a question for you. Are you aware of how relaxed you are? Are you aware of your spine and its position in space right now? Are you aware of your breath? Are you aware of the quality of your movement, if you're moving? Are you aware of the structure of your posture, if you are resting? Are you allowing your body to make sounds that match your inner experience? Just questions that are never not relevant in any moment. Because the truth is that many of us have been trained to be in very tense posture in the world. We have been trained by a civilization by a culture and often by families who are just doing their best to breathe shallow, to hunch, to lock our legs out when we're walking or standing, to sit all compressed, to move in a way that doesn't disturb people or draw too much attention to us, to dress in ways that help us to fit in and not stick out too much in the world. Our conditioning is actually not designed to help us to thrive. Our conditioning has very effectively created a whole civilization of people who are tolerant of internal tension, emotional turmoil, polarization, and on a, on a large level, radical injustice, a, a, a grotesque, distribution of our collective resources amidst the whole, resulting in tremendous suffering everywhere. And you know, all of these people want to march out and do something about it. Ah, ah. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, <laughs> please don't march. If you're going to do something about it, start right here going to do something about the imbalances of our world, then start right here with the imbalance inside of your own nervous system. Because if you go out there to do something about the imbalances out there from a place of imbalance in here, it's going to suck. It's going to suck for everybody eventually. Maybe not right away. Maybe you'll be very satisfied with your angry outbursts. However subtle that anger might be, it might just be an anxiety. I need to go and do something about it. <laughs> nah, fam. Do something about it. Do something about it right here with me right now by taking some deep breaths in through the nose. Oh, letting out a sigh. Oh, letting the breath touch your spine. Oh. 
Do something about it in the innermost sanctum of your world, your universe, your experience of life. <laughs> By giving yourself permission to shake a little bit, to bounce, to shake this passive tension out of your system. <laughs> to breathe into that dis-ease that we're so used to being the like motivator for action in the world. It's how we were trained. Go do things or else. <laughs> Go to school or else. Do your homework or else. Do your chores or else. Behave like we do or else. You will be punished corporally. <laughs> this is the violent conditioning that has been replicated generation after generation after generation into your nervous system, the one that you're sitting in right now. None of us have escaped this. No matter how lucky we may have been to have a relatively peaceful home and a relatively conscious family and all the wonderful conditions that may have contributed to someone out there living in a relatively loving, peaceful, happy, harmonious nervous system. But <laughs> There's a bit of a caveat here, fam. Because when we look from a holistic perspective, we have to understand the systems within systems within systems within systems that are the system of our whole experience. And we have to understand our own personal well-being to be embedded within these ever-expanding wholes my deep internal experience, my physical experience, my relational experience, my, com my familial experience, my communal experience. Oh, it just goes out. The ecosystem experience. The feeling of being separate somehow, being a thing among things is, is uh, an incredibly compelling convention. But the truth is that I am no more really an individual that I am than I am really just a, a cell in the body of life. My belonging to a greater whole is no less real than my skin suit identity. It's no less real. It's just less easy for the modern mind to relax into because we have been trained intensely, generation after generation, by a colonization. <laughs> to obey, to obey fear. It's the only way colonization ever went, wins. Colonization trains us to obey fear. We have bigger weapons. So if you don't do what we say, your family gonna die. We, I have the money. So if you don't do what I say, your family gonna starve. I have the political and social clout so if you don't agree with me or do what I say, I'm gonna make sure that you are rejected and excommunicated. I have enough money to hire a lawyer. So if you don't do what I say, no matter what the contract says, I'm gonna make sure and hire the United States government to take from me what I want from you, to take from you what I want from you. That's colonization, fam. That's violence. That's the compulsion of fear. Ooh, and it's in there, it's in here, it's, it's felt. <laughs> Anybody who's relaxed, truly deeply relaxed into life for a, even a moment 
has come to recognize the, the profound and heavy weight of this uh, colonization in the nervous system, the, the weight of the tension that we carry. When truly we're designed organically to be light. We are light, we are literally light. We are light. Everything that you're experiencing right now is light. The thoughts that are passing through this neocortex are just strains of light at a certain frequency. This shirt is just light at a certain frequency. And if this feels sort of unapproachable to you at a quantum level, think of it this way. The light of the sun is just trapped inside these fibers. This would not exist. This would not exist. This would not exist had not the light of the sun come down and stimulated something in this living, intelligent earth and grew it up and fed it as it grew. Everything that's ever grown here is just the light of the sun brought into the body of our mother and made to dance in a fresh and new way. We are light. Light is our nature. And you can know this intellectually and that doesn't really help. Because <laughs> there's a whole lot of us who know this stuff and who talk quantum theory all the time, but then who <laughs> We don't operationalize it. We don't operationalize it. Because in order for us to embody lightness, we have to operationalize this awareness we have of the quantum nature of reality. We have to operationalize the awareness we have of the modalities of colonization, how colonization works. And we have to understand that colonization is antithetical to the realization of the quantum nature of our existence. Colonization wants to compress us into a Newtonian physical bang, bang, bang reality. It wants to captivate our awareness and it wants to captivate our, our perspective so that we can collectively continue replicating this scenario where nobody's actually thriving. That's what, that's what colonization is doing. A scenario where half of the people on our planet live on less than $7 a week while there are exactly 64 people who control half of the world's wealth. 64 people control half of it. While there's half of the world living at $6.40 a fucking week. A week. Now, this is what is so. Ish. So how do we operationalize this? How does a human thrive in this world? How does a human who is a part of this, embedded in this world, thrive? <coughs> how do I accept the fact that right now I'm recording this and sharing this through a medium that is profiting from child labor in the Congo? from slave labor in China. How do I how do I embrace the injustice of this and still manage to actually thrive as a human? Oh. How do I let myself feel the impact of my decisions on people I can't see? This is how, this is how colonization continues to win. Through direct threat and force, and then through huge distraction and denial. 
of the reality of the situation. <laughs> we are participating in a system that rewards the most selfish among us and keeps supporting them to generationally increase their accumulation of our collective wealth and power. We're doing that. I'm doing that. I've been doing that my life. Less and less and less and less and less. But still, here I am. So, we can't turn away from this fact. And the tendency is to let this fact either contract us down, make us just collapse in, in like hopelessness and helplessness. Or to stand up and rage and fight it out there somewhere. But we live in a fractal reality. We live in a reality, a quantum reality. And to operationalize this quantum reality, we have to understand that that world is replicating itself inside of our body, inside of our mind and our heart and our most intimate relationship. That that world where one nation or one group or one identity structure that has already way more than another group and identity structure is violently stripping that indigenous group that has less of what they have so that they can have more. It can have more. That's happening right now. Right? And we get really mad about that. But are we in our own lives? Where? The question isn't are we. The question is where am I doing that? Where am I actually dehumanizing others? Where am I benefiting from the suffering of other people? We have to be honest with ourselves about that. I'm doing it right now by using this technology by paying this company that does not have my best interests or the best interests of the heart, of the world, of any, of any real living, thriving system at its core. I'm paying these people to get to use this technology that is exploitative at every level. The phone itself, the towers themselves, and then the social media systems that I'm, I'm sending my message out through. If you think they're here for you, <laughs> if you think they're really trying to help you be free and thrive in this world as a creature, a child of the ancient lovemaking of the sun and the earth is meant to be free and thrive. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to, disabuse you of this illusion, but they are designed to feed us just enough of what we like and need so that they can flood us with information that is just a waste of our human energy, to suck our attention into something meaningless so that it doesn't go out into the world and do something valuable and transformational and fucking revolutionary. <sighs> And I promise there's a place, there's a place for this anger that comes up when we realize that we are in, we're trapped. Where you can feel yourself trapped inside of these systems. How do you, you can't get into your car and drive somewhere without exploiting someone. You can't use your phone without exploiting someone. You can't go to McDonald's and order food without exploiting vast systems. You can't pay rent without being exploited. Rent is exploitation. Rent is poor people paying wealthy people's extra mortgages. That's what rent is, fam. We all have to pay it. <laughs> but just because I don't qualify for that loan, I don't get the equity. So who gets that equity? <laughs> right. 
Come on, team. How do we get real with ourselves about this? How do we not look away? How do we let ourselves feel without becoming collapsed? Oh, poor me. <laughs> and without becoming enraged and doing something unskillful. <laughs> well, we operationalize the fractal nature of our reality, the actual fractal nature of our reality, which says that when I move something at this innermost fractal dimension of my reality, then it, it starts to ripple out. It doesn't happen right away. It's not like fucking Harry Potter shit. It's not like that. Not right now. We are in a dense, dense, dense phase of evolutionary unfolding. Collectively, we are doing this very imbalanced, disharmonious, self-destructive thing. We are doing it. And most of us feel a lot more empowered when we point out how they're doing it. and then go fight them about it, <laughs> which is what colonization taught us to do. <laughs> Blame somebody else and then fight them for it. But all of our wisdom traditions, all of our great teachers of the world have guided us otherwise. Christ guided us to love. Christ guided us to seek within for the truth. The Buddha guided us to just pause, to just witness. First and foremost, and all of these traditions guide us to find our inner center before moving out into the world. And so if you find yourself any other than inspired, then there's work to be done. Inspired to create something beautiful. Inspired to walk an alternative route, to find the pathways of least injustice in our lives. Injustice is simply imbalance. The scales are not balanced. The yin and the yang are not harmonious. We're here to balance the scales. To ho'oponno. To make right. And to ho'oponopono, to make right right. But we only get to do that effectively when it's coming from a place of deep and genuine inspiration, emotional grounding, and clarity within. What we do only actually serves the evolution of our species, the evolution of our own personal journey, and the evolution of those who we touch when that comes from a different frequency entirely. And it is the frequency of love. It is undeniably and simply the frequency of love of love, of aloha. So come back, come back, baby, come back to your aloha. Which is just the presence of the breath. Ah, oh, come back, hey, come back, come back, hey. Thank you, I love you. Thank you, life, I love you. I know it looks grim, baby. Breathe it in and say thank you, thank you for this inheritance. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. I love you. Aloha. I breathe with you. Aloha. I breathe with you. <sighs> yeah, look at that. Bringing it up and out. I breathe with you. Aloha. <sighs> this is the revolution, babies. It starts small and quiet. The revolution 
starts with a revolutionary devotion to feeling love all day, every day. To build the reservoir of our love until there's no circumstance that can remove us from our love. That we remain grounded and rooted in aloha and the presence of the breath. And my greatest heroes, Martin Luther King, Mahatma Gandhi, my greatest heroes, Christ Jesus. These ones, they knew the power of ahimsa, the power of doing no harm, which emerges from the power of what Gandhi called satyagraha, the power of the living truth. Because whatever is at the seed motivating your behavior is what is going to replicate itself in the field. And when what is motivating your behavior is love, then it will be love that replicates itself. And love doesn't usually come with a tidal wave crashing and breaking everything. Love comes as a gentle current that buoys and holds up. So we devote ourselves to this love. We devote ourselves to withholding action from the world, the words that might want to spring out of our mouths in a moment of tension, the thoughtless action that wants to happen when we're distracted and upset about something. We withhold that until we restore a sense of ponno, a sense of justice and balance within our own body, mind, heart, and soul. Because we know that we're just going to make a bigger mess that we're going to have to clean up later if, if we let that degenerative impulse replicate itself out into the world. We know this. I think we already have enough of a mess to clean up here. And I absolutely trust us to clean it up. It's not a matter of if we can from here. It's a matter of, hmm, I wonder what this is going to look like. <laughs> I shattered a vase the other day. Accidentally shattered this big glass vase. Boom, all over the floor. Oh, I caught it with my foot. As it was falling down, I had my hands full. And then it slipped out. Now, I had a mess to clean up. I could have chosen to clean that mess up with a frown on my face. I could have chosen to feel really bad about that and punish myself emotionally for being so stupid, 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 stupid. But I didn't. I chose to clean it up with joy in my heart, with laughter, with a sense of surrendered determination to do what needed to be done lovingly. Lovingly toward myself, lovingly toward the space, lovingly toward my brother who I was getting a glass of water for when I knocked it over, who helped me. This is the essence. We have a mess to clean up. We have a mess to clean up that we are still making messier every day if we're honest with ourselves. Civilization itself, human civilization, is making a mess of our planet. Worse and worse every day. It's not getting better, despite all of our laws and all of our solar panels and shit. <laughs> it's just marching, marching, marching us further and further into the degeneration of the ecosystems that our great grandchildren will be relying upon. And this is also how colonization works. It, it, it pushes the consequences. It defers the consequences of its own actions out of its sight. Because you can't actually do that to, you can't do that to someone who is a human who you're looking at. You can't, you can't 
take from somebody like that? When somebody you're looking at, when you see that they're human, you can't harm a human. You can only harm an object in your mind, right? So we got this mess to clean up. And the mess is here. It's in our civilization. It's in our society. It's in our local community. Even the fucking most like conscious, meditative, ecstatic dance community. My ecstatic dance community is a mess right now. A mess. Still replicating the same traumas across the whole community. There's not a bad guy and a, and a good person. There's not a perpetrator and a victim who've caused all this mess in our community. No, we're doing it because we are not coherent and organized in our approach and committed together to an open-hearted, honest, truthful dialogue that includes the validity of everyone's experience. People are taking sides. People are boycotting our prayer based on identity politics and based on genuine care for somebody that has turned into a punitive activity. We're doing this in our most intimate relationships. We have a mess somewhere there if we're honest with ourselves. And there's a mess in here. If you're not a 10 out of 10 thriving in your physical, emotional, and mental and relational well-being, if you're not having the best sex of your fucking life, even if it's just with yourself, then you've got a mess to clean up. If you don't feel emotionally grounded and joyous most of the time, if you don't feel fluid and capable of meeting life's interesting possibilities with a sense of creative awe and delight, even when it's a broken glass, then there's some messes to clean up in here. There's some balancing to do inside. But we've been taught that everything is all separate. But what we understand at a deeper level and are learning how to operationalize in this regenerative revolution that is sprouting up right now is that my inner work is the world's work. And that if I allow myself to be honest with me about the ways that that thing that I hate out there is actually <laughs> replicating itself right here. And I allow my gentle attention to come and touch into that place without knowing how to fix it, without a need to make it wrong or right, uh, to demonize it or pathologize it in any way, but just to, <laughs> to be with the truth. <laughs> that I didn't know how to do it better. <laughs> and I still don't know how to, I still don't know how to feed myself without participating in injustice. I still don't know how to carry my own trauma in a way that doesn't replicate out and cause pain to people I love sometimes. I still don't know how to take a fucking deep breath. I don't know how to walk. I don't know how to, how, how to walk as a human creature. I don't know how to sit with good posture. I don't know how yet to keep love right at the very burning center of my life. It's okay. It's okay. You're lovable right there. We're all lovable right here in this mess that we were born into, that we were patterned with since we popped out of our mother's pearly gates. Nobody's fault. <sighs> but in order for us to clean up the mess, we're going to have to come to the, to the work with love in our heart. In order to clean up the mess, we're gonna have to work together. We're gonna have to learn to follow the right leaders, to gather under the right flags, 
to gather for the right purposes, following the proper spirit. Not to follow political leaders who rally our rage properly to get us to vote them into office or something. That's, that's corruption at, at, at its core. But to actually listen to the leadership of love together and to honor the people who support us in listening more deeply to the inner truth of the guidance of love. To follow programs, to follow the, the instructions, to gather together with and experiment with listening to people who are living the love that we in our, in our hearts long to live, but have not yet accessed as fully. And this love will disrupt all of the structures of ego. This love will disrupt all of the structures that are built on fear in our world. And it starts from the inside. And we have so little faith in what, what great mountains can be moved by this little mustard seed because we've never stopped to take the time to actually feed it and find out. We're just like, oh yeah, that phrase. Don't you know? <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> there are miracles in there. There are actual, literal miracles in there. If you consider a miracle to be life doing according to its own self-organizing design, what seems to disagree with our limited construct of what life is able to do. That's just all, that's all the miracle is. It is life doing what life was designed to do in conflict with our laws. <laughs> so let the miracles come, fam. Let them come from the gentle inner practice. Let them come from our, our unwavering devotion to only push, pull, only effervescing out into the world that which we are saturated in. That which our, our belly, our heart, and our mind agree is good. That and only that. And at least we'll start making fewer messes just a little bit by little bit. And the more each of us does that, the more we find others who are similarly committed to this radical path of self-responsibility, this like radical path of not trying to get anybody else to be different, <laughs> but only being that difference in ourselves and inviting people to come play. Hey, come on, come play. It's really fun. It's really fun out here. We can dance our way. We're not gonna march our way to the revolution. We dance in our way to the revolution, fam. That's why we're here. We're loving our way to the revolution. We're singing our way. A revolutionary revolution. A truly revolutionary revolution that's not interested in finding enemies to blame. It's not rebelling against anyone because that's fucking high school shit. There is a great difference between a rebel and a revolutionary. The rebel needs someone to fight. The rebel identifies as rebelling against something and therefore it reifies polarity and separation. But the revolutionary just keeps turning the wheel keeps revolving and evolving a regenerative evolutionary a revolutionary is revolutionizing their their being from the inside out not trying to make the world better so that i can be more comfortable in it but making myself better so that uh, that better that health that thriving that radiance just flows forth effortlessly wherever i am and it makes people uncomfortable. 
because it's not comfortable. Ecstasy is not comfortable. Ecstasy is out beyond the comfort zone. Ecstasy is something beyond us. It just flows and effervesces. Love is beyond us. So how do we together cultivate this? We don't know. We're students of this revolution. We're all students. If you're not a student of this revolution, if you yourself are not a student of how to awaken and revolutionize your entire internal reality, to be harmonious, to have your inner male and your inner female harmoniously collaborating and giving birth to the eternally innocent child within you, if you're not a student of that, then what are you a student of? What are you studying? Are you studying how to, how to succeed in post-industrial, in the post-industrial empire? Are you studying how to get the most out of the crumbling empire, the most stuff? That's what a lot of people are studying. That's what a lot of people are advertising. How to get the most stuff. <sighs> That's just the truth. How to profit. Is that what you want? You want profit? I'll take prophecy over profit any day. And here's a prophecy for you. Until the impulse to profit is purged from the genome, we will continue the path of destruction. Until the impulse to profit, to take more from the interaction that's needed to satisfy to accumulate wealth that I don't actually need while others have less than they actually need until this greed, which is the very basis of our economy, is purged from your DNA, from your motivation system until we are collectively content having what we actually need and no more and no fucking less we will continue this path of destruction. It is impossible for a human to thrive in profit. No human thrives by following the dictates of the profit motivation. It doesn't happen. I breathe, my lungs are not taking a profit. All we need is this day's daily bread. That's all we need. And there are billions who don't have it. While there are many millions who have so much more than they'll ever need and are using their more to get even more of the pie. That's what's going on. More and more of the pie sequestered into the hands of the few, the clever and the ruthless. The truly ruthless. That's not to say that there aren't wealthy people who have great intentions and who aren't very generous. I'm not trying to paint person, people who have money as, as evil. No. We're all following that program from some direction. We're all doing the thing. And the most powerful group. <laughs> The truly powerful ones are just disorganized. <laughs> the few are very well organized. Yeah, they've had their systems in place for a long time and have been evolving those systems out ahead of the, the herd. <laughs> but the herd has been doing all the work for them <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> we've been serving that. We've all been serving that. 
and getting reinforced for our positions in that. Time to grow up, humanity. Time to wake up, brothers and sisters, kin. Time to wake up. Time to remember love. Time to slow down, to ha I ha ha, to get low, to humble ourselves up, and to become the love that we seek the world to reflect. That's it. So simple. So revolutionary. To just start to let love win a little more every day. Just a little more. We we'll need to be some kind of idealized saint. That's not what we're here for. This is that ghetto awakening, fam. This is that awakening that's on the ground and real and raw. We get to make mistakes along the way to our greatest love and awakening. Our mistakes are medicine if we can bring them in, learn from them, and commit ourselves to actually cleaning them up instead of just moving on to the next space to make the mistakes in. There's no other place to go. There's nowhere else to go. We're here. This is our time. We're not leaving this for the ones to come. We're here now to embody this loving revolution, the evolution of humanity, the regenerative reimagining of our culture, to build a mycelium of love so that when the inevitable collapse of these absolutely unfit for thriving systems happens, it doesn't crush everybody underneath it. We're here to build that mycelium now the regenerative, resilient mycelium that knows that we are heading into times of great change and turbulence. And that is not projecting fear onto it, but projecting excitement into it, projecting love into it. Yes, finally, we're coming to the place that has been prophesied for many, many millennia. We're coming there. We are on the threshold, fam. And, whoo, Nobody said it was going to be easy. It's intense. It's difficult. Ouch. Ugh. Ow. I don't get just to take up a sword and hack through people like I did in all those other incarnations. I don't get to rally my armies to go against no matter how just my cause was in the past. Because no sword going to do it this time. No. We beat our swords into plowshares. Because you can't tell me that 100,000 men warring at each other can get more done than 100,000 men planting food for their families. There's no, there's no math in the world that's gonna derive any other conclusion except for the sick and twisted math of those who are committed to inequity and injustice in the world. Who have somehow convinced all of those beautiful men and women to take up weapons, to destroy what they could so much more beautifully help to rebuild together. Because when we understand that the only time somebody needs power is when they go do something bad, then we no longer venerate power. When we understand that you only need power when you're trying to do something against someone's will. Power is the antithesis of consent. I don't need power if we are consenting to work together for a common cause. I don't need power over you. I don't need guns. I don't need laws. I don't need threats. I don't need emotional violence. I don't need to call you names. I don't need to mislead you or lie to you in any way. If we're clearly on the same page of what needs to be done and we're committed to conducting ourselves in a way that is loving, responsible, empathetic, and generous along the way, 
then nobody needs power. We just need to cultivate ever more elegant tools for our collaboration. And colonization has created tools to power, to control, to, to uh, exploit resources. But the regenerative culture that is emerging right now in the darkest hour of humanity, it's a culture of collaboration. And that culture of collaboration emerges from within. And the culture of collaboration within our own being is a culture of deep honor and respect for the intelligence, the veracity, the wild manna of our body is a deep reverence for the expansive, loving intelligence of our heart. It is a reverence for the clarity and creative genius of the mind, working in harmony together, collaborating, mind, heart, and belly in intimate, harmonious collaboration. Not one going one way and the other going the other, or one going one way and the other going the other, no, no. That is disharmony. That's how they get you. That's how the pattern uses you. It, it subluxates you, it incoheres you. So you're fighting yourself and following a mind, which is the easiest part of our being to condition. conditioned through language which we made up we didn't make up these bodies we didn't make up emotions but we made up all the languages that we use and those languages highly auger for a certain kind of experience of life and paradigm so we have to remember the actual innate coherence, which is a coherence of the spine, a coherence of all of our parts of our base, rooted, grounded, grounded in the earth, grounded in our physicality, grounded in the way it feels, in the way we, we want to move when we touch into this energy. Oh, we cohere our heart. We open the heart again and again to love. Thank you. I love you. Thank you, I love you. We open the mind, we open the mind. We don't close the mind down to the possibilities. We recognize that our neocortex don't get it. Our neocortex does not get it. We recognize that our neocortex is beautiful and can perceive incredible things when it's open and resting in alignment or dancing in alignment with the with the na'al and the pu'uvai then our mana'o then our thoughts can be pure and clean pleasant olu olu they can be pleasant because when I'm afraid my mind shuts down when I'm contracted, my mind is corrupted. My perception of what's happening right in front of me is corrupted. When my heart rate is low, when my cortisol is low, when my serotonin is high, actually my, my, my perceptual capacities are favored highly, much more veridical, much more accurate to the actual thing that is happening in front of me. The more contracted and in fear I am, the less veridical are my perceptions of what is happening inside and outside, period. <coughs> so let's have a clear revolution by having a loving, relaxed, integrated, posturally thriving experience of life. 
Take that with you wherever you go and see what happens. Take an open heart with you through your day. Look into people's eyes and smile at them and see what happens. Walk. Instead of walking with a stick up your butt and locking your knees out, which no joint of the body ever needs to lock itself out. Not even when you're stretching. Like, don't do it. It's not good for you. Almost ever. Never. Walk through the world with your knees bent. Walk with a little bounce in your step. Let your hips kind of swagger and swing. Let yourself just cruise through the world. Let yourself dance through the world. See how that feels for a day. Try it. Just dance through the world for a day. People go look at you. Should you not do it because they look at you? Should you not give yourself the, the physical, emotional, and, and cognitive nourishment that you deserve that help you to thrive because other people are going to feel uncomfortable because you're acting like something other than a domesticated human? It's up to you, fam. It really is. But there's no dimension of the revolution that is not risky. There's no dimension of this revolution that I'm talking about. This, this revolution that is emerging from within the awakening ones. That will spread like wildfire throughout humanity because you cannot mistake thriving. You actually cannot mistake it. You can't mistake love. You can be fooled by people pretending to love only to the degree that you fool yourself. But if you've ever been in the presence of love, if you've ever been in the presence of true love, you cannot deny that that's love. And you know that that cannot be faked. And that's our ace in the hole, fam. That's our ace in the hole. Because we've constructed this weird reality that says that all of these people who've accumulated all of this wealth well, they're benefiting from this system while well, all these people who have less are victims of the system. <laughs> no. No, we're all, we're all being used by behavioral patterns replicating throughout the genome. And I'm sorry, but if you have 10 people who have enough food for 10, and there's one person who takes more food than they need at the expense of the other 10, and then is willing to hurt the other ones to, who try to come get their food, that's a sick animal. That's a sick animal. Go look around in nature for a healthy animal that does that. That's the sickest animal in the group. And eventually others will get sick because of the, the continued replication of that sickness. But that's a sick animal. That's the sickest animal among us. So you have to look at those who are so terrified of life, so untrusting in the nature of love, that they have to accumulate around themselves power just in order to feel safe, just in order to meet the same human needs that we all have, and there are people who meet them, I wouldn't say just as well, all right, in the but first differently. Exercise, we're gonna sing E and A. Oh. Let's go. Ha <laughs> ha. Who meet them differently on seven dollars a week humans can actually get their needs met at a baseline level for seven dollars a week crazy while other humans feel enraged when they don't get access to their millions of dollars a week to waste on luxury that exploits everybody in the process. That's where we at. Don't get down about it. Just be honest about it. Find your smile about it and find where you're doing that. Find where you are motivated to get more from an interaction than you give. That's the basis of it right there. Where are you looking for a bargain, fam? Where are you looking to give less and get more? That's it. That's the seed of everything. 
Because when you reverse that, when you sit with that long enough to find the, the organic reversal of that impulse, then you find that all you want to do is give. You want to give from the overflow of love in your heart. And when all we want to do is give, then all of us get to have enough. That's it. So easy. It is the antithesis of the greatest sickness of our day. Generosity. And generosity starts with aloha. Starts with being generous with yourself, with your own breath. Where do you want to give less time to get more results in your life? Where do you want to give less vulnerability to receive more vulnerability in your life and relationships? Where are you looking for a bargain in your, in your health? If you're physically unwell, chronically, there's somewhere that you are giving less and trying to get more. Guaranteed. You are the source of this imbalance inside of you. Some people ain't gonna like me saying that, but prove me wrong. Come talk to me for an hour. Come sit with me and shake with me. And let me show you. Let me show you to the place inside yourself where you are shortchanging what really matters inside of you to follow a program towards what you think that you could benefit from. If you have plenty of money, but no health and no love, your priorities are fucked up. You are, you are running a pattern that is damaging. Just gotta be honest about it. Trace it back, trace it down to its root. Once again, I find myself talking and talking and talking. But these things need to be said. And I am getting better and better at expressing them in a way that people can hear. Every day I'm getting better and better at embodying this truth in my life so that I can be that agent of love at the center of my being. Generous, balanced, whole, giving as much as I receive. Receiving fully and giving fully at every opportunity. Not taking, asking for what I want and accepting what comes. No take. There is no take. Take is a sickness. I don't take anything. I receive and I give. That's it. Life knows what I need better than I do. And I don't need more stuff. I don't need to possess anything. But having access to more of our community resources would give me the opportunity to demonstrate at larger and larger scales the power of these regenerative codes. Because I am more integrated within myself in the regenerative ethic than ever have I been in the past. And it's only accelerating at greater rates with its natural declination process and its natural sort of declines and steps forward and falls back. I ain't perfect. I ain't a saint. Nah. I'm just this fucking guy right here. Devoted to learning and growing, and paying attention to the results of my experiments and making minor adjustments, doing my best not to make the precise same mistake twice, but just to Iterate again and again. And to do it all oh, from a place of love, which is rather pleasurable, fun. And I invite you to come and do it with me. Come join me. Come shake with me. Come drop in with me for a minute. Let's have some shakes and some prayers. Let's talk about what we find in our hearts when we tune into where that pain is in, in us. <sighs> I'll hold you there. Will you hold me there? 
Just bear witness to the feeling, this ancestral pain, this pain that we lock away so that we don't have to feel it all day, every day in a society that is just sick. It's unwell, profoundly unwell. In a world that is tragically harmful to human thriving. Can we touch into that pain together? Can we be gentle with it, breathe into it? Let the domesticated animal come forth. Be uncivilized for a moment. So we can reorganize our nervous system around more organic and primordial impulses, which are healthier for our body, our heart, and our cognitive intelligence. Healthier for our spirit, healthier for our relationships, healthier for our economy, healthier for our community, and healthier for our planet. Can we slow down and shake loose from the patterns that are gripping humanity from the inside and just take care of our portion first and then let that song ring out into the world together? I know we can. In fact, I know we will. You'll be there. If you're listening to this message, then I'll see you there. It's inevitable. I know this. It's inevitable because given enough time to evolve and grow and given the favorable conditions, the directionality of all psychological evolution brings us to a state of greater generosity. We have this very well documented in our science that the evolutionary impulse of life and the developmental curvature of, of humans from a large lifelong scale beyond just like functional adult, they all point in the same direction to greater, greater spheres of complexity being brought into a greater sense of wholeness and collaboration. I mean, this body is just made of a bunch of creatures that once were not the same creature. All these differentiated cells that decided to work together at some point. And we ourselves, this body is just one part of a hive a soul hive that is designed to collaborate. It's designed to move in harmony on behalf of the whole. And that harmonious movement on behalf of the whole is actually really healthy for each of the individual parts. So when I nourish my cells, my whole body thrives more. And when I nourish the coherence of my body and the way that my, bo my body moves coherently and generates power coherently from the core, then all of my cells feel it and they thrive more. And so we're in a regenerative thriving cycle. Huh. Like that. It's simple. It really is simple. When we get out of the way, it's so simple. I invite you into the simplicity today. Find the simplest way for you to love yourself, which I believe is just taking deep breaths. <sighs> if you're any other than joyously engaged in what you're doing, then pause and take deep breaths. At least, if you can add a little shake, you're gonna help accelerate the diminishment of passive tension that physically accompanies that discomfort. And if you can make some sound, like authentic sound of what the feeling is now, then you're going to accelerate the emotional recalibration. And if you imagine the love of the universe entering your body as you inhale and you just say thank you in your mind. 
And then you exhale that love. Oh, and you see in your mind's eye that love just spreading out and wafting like rivers of rainbows just dancing around and nourishing everything. Your breath is nourishment to something. Thank you. Oh, I love you. If you bring the mind and the belly and the heart into a coherent practice of softening, then you will cohere. And you will bear the fruits of that coherence. If you sit here judging me as, as weird, or if you sit here watching it, thinking you're going to get benefit from it without actually fucking doing it yourself, then I'm pretty sure you know where that goes. It's right to where you're headed, fam. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that to create a future that nobody has seen, all of us are going to have to do a whole bunch of shit that we have never done before. And we're going to be bad at it at first. But with practice, with the right attitude, with the right perseverance, the gentle, loving, patient, compassionate perseverance, and the fire in our bellies to know that we're doing this for our families and for our children, for the children of the earth and the children of the future of the earth. Ain't nothing we can't accomplish. Truly. Aloha. 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 May this, some part of this transmission find its way into some part of you that needs it today. And may you just dance with that. Throw away the rest. Throw it all away. It doesn't matter what I just said. It doesn't matter whether you agree or disagree. If you listened, something got in there. Play with that. Do your own experiments. Do your own fucking research, fam. It's that easy. Mwah.